there folks, Josh Crowell here with Harry Browns. Welcome to this month's edition of FCTV. We're proud sponsors of Fairboat Community Television uh, Station and today we're going to be going over with you some options as far as Jeeps go. Hi, I'm Dr. Corey Miller with Ritchie Eye Clinic and LASIK Center and today I want to talk to you about a subject I know we've covered in the past but it's very common and it's dry eye. Um, a lot of people I see um, whether it's for dry eye or if they're coming in for cataract surgery or eye injections often deal with dry eye also. Uh, it's some, one of those conditions that you can never fully cure dry eye, but there are definitely things we can do or you can do that can help alleviate some of the symptoms of dry eye. Oftentimes people will feel like their vision is fluctuating uh, throughout the day or they'll be reading a book and their vision starts to get worse and they take a break, it gets a little bit better. That's one sign of dry eye. Another is kind of the classic feeling of something's in the eye, that foreign body sensation. Uh, or that gritty feeling. Some people will get crusting around their eyelids and lashes uh, or people will notice that especially in the mornings uh, where they, they just feel extra gritty and it takes a while uh, for that, that feeling to go away. All of those could be symptoms of dry eye. Uh, and what I tell patients is that dry eye treatment um, is often a kind of stepwise approach where we don't throw everything at it all at once. We try different things because some things work better for one person than another. Um, and we gotta just find what works best for you. So we really try to tailor um, our treatments for each individual person. Uh, so the kind of basic things that I tell people are three different things. One, let's replace those tears, your body's natural tears with artificial tears. Those are over the counter drops. Uh, and there's a lot of different brands. People often ask me, well, which is the best brand to use? Uh, and I say, it really, doesn't, um, it really doesn't matter what brand you use, just find the one that works best for you because every person likes one brand versus another. There are a few things that I tell people to avoid though. I tell them to avoid things that have another medication that claims it'll take the red out. Sometimes those can cause more irritation or redness in the, the long run. Uh, the other thing I tell people is that I do uh, like to use preservative-free artificial tears. Those are tears you can use as often as you want. Sometimes the preservative in the, um, the other tears, if you're using it more than four times a day, can again lead to some uh, more chronic irritation. Uh, the other thing I tell people to do along with the tears is to do warm compresses. It's often nice to buy a mask that you can heat up in the microwave, put it over your eyelids, about three to five minutes at a time and do it once or twice a day can be very helpful. Uh, that helps open up the oil glands of the eyelids and that oil is ne uh, necessary to mix with that uh, the watery part of our tears to help them stay better. And then finally, I tell people to do a good eyelid cleaning regimen um, or lid scrub is what we call it. You can use uh, sprays or foams or even wipes that are designed to do it. Kind of the, the old school way of doing it is just using baby shampoo and really scrubbing and cleaning around uh, those eyelids and lashes. Help get rid of any debris, help remove makeup if you wear, your, uh, wear makeup. So doing those is kind of the, the bare minimum that I, I tell people to do and, and oftentimes that's enough for some patients. Dry eye, um, we usually think of it as caused by kind of three different things. One of those is a lack of tear production, the other is uh, inflammation, uh, and then Finally, it's evaporation, so the tears are evaporating too quickly. Oftentimes, people have some um, combination of all three for why they have their dry eye. So we really try to tease out with different tests we do in the clinic to determine you know, what's the main driver here of your dry eye and what can we do to try and treat that. There, are, thankfully, are a lot of different medications, uh, prescription-wise and non-prescription on the market that can really um, help people uh, solve and really mitigate the signs and symptoms of, of dry eye and we try to tailor that approach 
um, to your specific eye and what you need. So we try different things and eventually we are able to find the one that works for people. Um, but it does require a lot of kind of trial and error. Uh, and so we here at Ritchie Eye Clinic really try to work with each individual patient to, to find that right, right thing that works for them to help them see better, feel better with their eyes, um, and become less, uh, less burdened by um, their dry eye symptoms. Uh, the other thing that we, uh, we do is sometimes that we try these different prescription medications, um, and sometimes people need a little bit more than that. Sometimes they need in-office treatments to really help with their dry eye, and we can help walk patients through that also. So if you feel like you've been dealing with dry eye and just nothing's getting better, feel free to contact us at Ritchie Eye Clinic and we're more than happy um, to wor uh, work with you to find the best solution for your dry eye. Thank you. The following content is brought to you by River Bend Nature Center. Saturday, October 5th, Bagels and Birds, 10 to 11 a.m. This is for all ages and the cost is free. Come and enjoy coffee and a free bagel provided by the Inn at Shattuck and watch for birds at Windows on the Wild. Saturday, October 5th, story time with a naturalist, bird migration and hike, 11 to 12 p.m. This is for all ages and the cost is free. Read a story with a Riverbend naturalist. In October, we'll learn about bird migration and then go outside for a bird hike. Saturday, October 5th, Sweet Reads Book Club, 2 to 3 p.m. Ages teen and up. Cost is free. Discuss environmental-related books with eco-conscious individuals while enjoying refreshments in the Interpretive Center. The book for this month is A Year in the Wilderness, Bearing Witness in the Boundary Waters. Monday, October 7th, Little Sprouts, Color, Shapes, and Textures, 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. The cost is $10 per non-member child and $5 per member child. Adults attend free. Discover how amazing our natural world is with its spectacular patterns, colors, and textures. Your little sprout will learn about the natural world through nature play and exploration. Dress for the weather as a portion of the class will be outside. Monday, October 14th, Homeschool Survival Skills and Compass Course, 1 to 3 p.m. The ages is 5 to 12. The cost is $10 per non-member and $5 per member. Join us as we learn important survival skills like building a fire and using a compass to navigate the woods of River Bend Nature Center. These are some of our most popular activities. Your child is sure to have fun. Wednesday, October 16th, Lunch and Learn, Freshwater Mussels with Ben Minerich from Minnesota Zoo, 12 to 2 p.m. The cost is $10 per non-member and $5 for member. The Minnesota Zoo takes part in many conservation projects around the world. Join Ben Minerich, Mussel Conservation Specialist, with the Minnesota Zoo as he shares his studies and research in restoring our freshwater mussel, skipper and skipperling populations. Bring your own lunch and join us as we learn about a new topic each month. Saturday, October 19th, Boy Scout Badge Day, 10 to 1.30 p.m. Environmental Science. The cost is $15 per non-member and $10 per member. Ages 11 to 17, earn your badges in environmental science. Register and bring a lunch to eat for the day. Note, some specific requirements are more time consuming than what can be done during this program. It is up to the scout and scout leader to help fulfill any remaining requirements. Monday, October 21st, Little Sprouts, Creepy Crawlers, 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. The cost is $10 per non-member child, and $5 per member child. Adults attend free. Are you daring enough to creep with the creepy crawlies? Your little sprout will learn about the natural world through nature play and exploration. Just for the weather, as a portion of the class will be outside. Bats, Bones, and Bonfires, Saturday, October 26th. Time, 2 to 5 p.m. Bring your family for an afternoon of fun. There will be horse-drawn wagon rides, Minnesota Zoomobile, a bonfire with s'mores, games, trick-or-treat bags, and more. Costumes are encouraged. The pricing is $10 per member family and $15 per non-member family. No pre-registration. Pay at the door. 
Cash and check are preferred. Credit cards are accepted. Thank you to our event sponsors. Hamer Law Office and Vision Realty Group with Weikert Realty for sponsoring this year's family event. We are grateful for your support. Haunted Trail, Saturday, October 26th. Time, 7 to 9 p.m. Discovery School of Faribault is bringing their talents and scare to River Bend Nature Center to create a haunted trail. Be prepared to be frightened. Not recommended for children under 13. Pricing is $5 per person and $2 if you attended Bats, Bones, and Bonfires. You must present discounted ticket. No pre-registration. Pay at the door. Cash and check are preferred. Credit cards are accepted. We hope to see you this month at Riverbed Nature Center. County Historical Society and this month I want to tell you about all of the crazy programs that we have going on here that we think you'd have a bunch of fun at. So the first thing we're doing is we are going to be down at the Faribault Fall Festival in downtown. That's going to be on October 5th. Uh, you can find us doing mask making with all of the kids so if you want to come out and have a good time we'll, we'll be part of that event. The following weekend is our annual meeting. We'll be out in Morristown. That's going to be at the Morristown Community Center from 1 o'clock until 4. And we're going to be having Dusty Deans from the Faribault Fire Department talking about the history of the fire department. That's going to be our big program. Also, October, in case you weren't aware, is Halloween is our big event. So we are going to be doing our program on mortuary archaeology. That's uh, doing archaeology on burial sites and things like that. So our curator, Jenna, uh, who is an archaeologist by training, will be doing that program. So that should be really fun, really interesting, uh, different way of looking at archaeology than we normally do. And then the following Thursday, so Jenna's program is going to be on October 17th at 6 o'clock. And then after that, we have one more uh, program that we're going to be doing and it's a workshop on mosaic flower uh, mosaic flowers for uh, African Americans early African Americans here in Rice County we are doing those there'll be grave markers to really celebrate that history of those members of our community that haven't gotten a whole lot of celebration uh, over time so we're doing that with Micah Anders she is uh, one of the genealogists that we do a lot of work with around here, she got a grant, so we're really looking forward to that program. So that'll be on October 24th, also at 6 o'clock. The one that I waited until the very end to tell you about is part of a new workshop series that we are starting. So this first one is going to be on October 19th. We are going to be down at Buckham West Senior Center. It's going to be at 1 o'clock, and it is Beginner's Quilting. So if you've ever wanted to learn how to do quilting, you can come down and learn. It's $20 a person so that we can get all the materials that we need, but you will walk out with your own little mini quilt that you get to, to learn and make. So we're very excited about this. We're hoping every few months we'll be able to do a big workshop like this where we can sort of bring those crafts and trades to people, give them a chance to try their hand at it and really get to learn it. We're really looking forward to that program. If you're interested, Give us a call. Uh, we're just borrowing the room from Buckham, so give us a call, register, we'd be happy to see you. All of our programs will be down here at the Rice County Historical Society in our meeting room, except for our quilt workshop, which will be down at Buckham West on the 19th, and we will be downtown on October 5th for the Fall Festival. I'm Dave Nichols from the Rice County Historical Society. Preserving the past for future generations. <laughs>
Jill Strotman, the Youth Recreation Coordinator at the Faribault Park and Rec. And coming up here in October, we have a brand new program. We have a boys volleyball skills clinic for boys in grades two through five. It'll be October 21st through November, and we're going to be running Mondays and Thursdays out at the Armory. So you want to check that out and get your spot before they disappear. And a new program timing, our Zumba class is going to be meeting out at Washington Rec Center in the gymnasium, which is the favorite spot to be. They are out there Mondays from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. and on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5.15 to 6.15 p.m. So that is your Zumba fitness class. Hi everybody, my name is Devin Fawarik. I'm a Recreation Coordinator with Faribault Park and Rec. Got some upcoming things in October to share with you. So starting on October 1st, we're having open gym at the Armory on Tuesdays from 6 to 9 p.m. We're also starting a men's basketball league. It's going to be six weeks long, you'll get 12 games, and there's going to be an end of season tournament. First games will start on October 16th with the end of season tournament on November 27th. And if there's interest in a women's league, we'll also be making that happen. And then we have adult volleyball starting on October 7th for co-ed and October 10th for women's. Co-ed will be played on Mondays and women on Thursdays. Sign up for one season or both. You can save $50 if you sign up for both. The first season runs from beginning of October to late December. The second season runs from beginning of January to the end of March. And then we're also going to be starting for the first time, a Fall Spike Fest tournament, which will be run on November 2nd and 3rd. On Saturday, we'll have a men's and women's tournament, and on Sunday, the Co-Rec tournament. And that'll be out at the Armory as well. Thanks. Hi, I'm Kevin O'Brien, Recreation Superintendent for the City of Faribault. Just a few updates from the Aquatics Department. We are in full school year operation season. We've got indoor swim lessons running at full speed with ses sessions happening Tuesday and Thursday nights, typically by the month. We will have October and November available for our typical Red Cross levels of um, level one through level five. Registration is still open for those October and November class with spots still available. And this school year we've got open swim Saturdays and Sundays from 1.15 to 4. As we get into holidays we'll be offering open swim on the non-school days, but Monday through Friday will be from 1.15 to 3 to allow our staff to get out for high school sports practices during the week. But then again, still staying with the 1.15 to 4 on the Saturdays and Sundays. Other opportunities, we've got babysitter and CPR classes happening on the last Saturday of the month, alternating months, so babysitter one month, CPR classes another month. And um, last, don't forget our birthday party room rentals on Saturdays and Sundays during public open swim time from 1 to 4. The total for the room rental and admission to open swim during that public open swim time is $96.64 after tax. You can't beat that price for a private room and opportunity for the kids to go swim in the pool. And then lastly, before we go, we've got our holiday tree, Central Park tree display coming. So if you or your family or local business would like to donate a tree with a metal base to be put on display for not quite two weeks in Central Park and then donate it to a family who might not otherwise have one, um, contact our um, administrative assistant, Stacy at 507-334-2064. Thank you. My name is Chad, I'm the pharmacy manager at the Hy-Vee here in Faribault and uh, today's just going to be a quick reminder to get all of your vaccines, especially this time of year, it's flu and COVID shot season um, and so we do have the flu shots available in the store. Uh, Walk-ins are 10 to 5 on weekdays and 11 to 3 on the weekends. Uh, we have a nurse here then who helps us give them so that way it goes to, uh, a little bit quicker for everyone. And then also the COVID shots, you can do the same thing. Otherwise, you can also make an appointment online for either flu or COVID or any other vaccine at hyvee.com slash COVID. And if you make those appointments, then all the paperwork's done ahead of time and it's a little uh, quicker for everyone that way. Uh, but you can walk in during those other times. Thank you. In front of us here, we've got a Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Now this here is gonna be a little different than your standard Grand Cherokee. Biggest reason being that L means that it has a third row worth of seating in it. So you've got two extra seats in the back. 
Now typically your Jeep is gonna be either a four or five seater, depending on how you have the middle row equipped. In the L, you're gonna actually be able to get up to six or seven people in there, um, depending again on how you have this middle section equipped. So nice to have that extra third row of seating. It does fold all the way down, so you still get plenty of storage space in the back if that's what you're used to. And again, still gonna be a four wheel drive Jeep, you know, loaded with all the safety features that you're looking for, as well as the comfort. And so the reason they came out with the L is because it, a lot of people do need the third row of seating. On the off chance that you don't need to have the extra seats back here, you can still fold them down. Get plenty of storage space, actually a little more than what your standard Cherokee, your Grand Cherokee was offering. And so one question people always have, of course, is you know what makes a Grand Cherokee L the Grand Cherokee L? Like I mentioned, that third row seat is gonna be a big part of that. On top of that, there is gonna be different trim levels among the Grand Cherokee L's, just like you have in your standard Jeeps. So you've got your you know, Altitude X, you've got your Limited. Again, biggest difference there is just gonna be the equipment that the vehicle comes standard with. So to answer that question, the different lettering, the different uh, you know, badges that you see on the vehicle typically just stands for different options in it. And we'd be happy to go over what that consists of as well. Hello, Faribo, Nord Johnson here with your Faribault Area Chamber of Commerce and Tourism. Um, welcome to October. Um, I'm sure that you all have not gotten enough of the political advertising and messaging yet. So you have a few more weeks, so enjoy that while you can. Obviously, that's a little bit tongue in cheek. But talking about elections, I do want to put that out there. Voting does matter. And I'm gonna share importantly from the Chamber's perspective, we vote on policy and we vote on business and economy friendly uh, candidates. That's, that's the way we like to see our elected officials conduct themselves. Uh, things that are good for the economy and good for business, that's good for the whole community. So that's typically where we stand. And as far as waving a red flag or a blue flag, we don't point people in those directions, especially when it comes to local elections. Um, city council, school board, um, we vote values and we vote um, how they carry themselves with regard to the entire community. Uh, one issue candidates, um, in my experience, is that person that runs for a seat because they want one book taken away or they want one sport added from a school board perspective or uh, they want to make a new dog ordinance or get a stop sign added to their corner in town. Um, those single issue folks, we find that to be typically um, a failed candidate during their tenures when they get on. So uh, pay attention, see if they're really speaking to you about the issues that are important for the community and important for the organization they represent, the schools, the business of running the city. So. To that end, we are doing candidate videos again this year. Um, there, we're just finishing up the recording. Um, I've been able to just sit in on some of those and I can tell you we've got some really good people running for offices. Um, please log on, Troy's gonna put a link up there so you can go and watch the candidates' answers for our questions. Um, be an informed voter and be sure to vote. So thank you for that. A uh, quick little bit now on what have we got coming up. Uh, we've got a lot of really good things coming up. We're just coming off of uh, our Pizza and Politics event at South Central College, and we also are just coming off of the Fall Festival. Some of you might see this like the day of the Fall Festival in early October. Um, I, I'm hoping they'll go really well. We got the chili contest and uh, we're downtown and Troy is in charge of the weather this year, right? So I'm sure that's gonna be awesome too. Um, and come on to the downtown. Um, the, you'll recognize some changes, some new businesses, some freshening up of storefronts in three different blocks, and I, I think you're gonna enjoy it. So come on down and have some fun. Next, we have our farm business brunch. So that's, that's a long time event that the Faribault Chamber of Commerce Ag Committee puts on. Um, we have speakers and we celebrate um, some of our awesome agriculture partners in Rice County. And to be sure, anybody that lives in Rice County or works in Rice County is affected by agribusiness. And uh, we recognize the importance 
and we're very pleased to be able to have a strong ag committee and thank you everybody that's on that um, to help us have some role in the recognition and celebration along with anything that we can do to help the business of agriculture because that helps lift all of us in Rice County. Uh, that event, by the way, open to the public. You can buy tickets for that. That is on Thursday, November 21st. So Troy will put a number up there to call the chamber for tickets and um, we hope to see you there. We also have sponsorships available for the Ag Committee event. Um, if you would like personally or for your business to show your support, um, you can make a donation and we'll make sure that that goes to support agribusiness, ag education, and MEC, Mechanical Engineering Construction Trade Pathways, which are very important for the ag community. So feel free to uh, contact, con <coughs> contact us for that as well. Um, and our winter festival. I think this must be number seven of those, uh, six for sure. And we're gonna have the winter parade again this year, probably fireworks. Um, the whole slate of events is gonna mirror uh, those things that we've found to be successful. So there will be horse-drawn carriage rides in the district. Um, the community center at uh, Faribault Park and Rex are gonna have their awesome Thursday night events going on. Friday night will be the Christmas tree lighting at Central Park. Uh, Saturday, we're working on the street dance as well as our fireworks and the awesome Winterfest parade. Now, with regard to the parade, if you think you'd like to put your family on a hay wagon, safely of course, and decorate that up, have a family float in the parade, we always love to have business floats, clubs, I mean the eagles are in, the elks are in, um, we love to have as many organizations, families are just interested, happy Winterfest people uh, represented in the parade. It's a tiny fee, I think it's 25 bucks. Um, give us a shout, we'll get you registered for that parade. Uh, with that, um, please remember to vote. Um, be informed as you cast your votes and uh, anything we can do for you, give us a call. Thanks so much, Farewell. Happy October! It's Laura Bach coming to you from the Faribault Foundation. In October, we are calling all philanthropists. We have two great events coming up. The 100 Women Who Care, taking place early in the month, but there's still time to get a ticket. Uh, that happens on Sunday, October 6th at 4 o'clock at Apple Creek Orchard event center uh, and then 100 men on a mission happening thursday october 24th um, at 1201 cannon circle here in Faribault. Um, this is your opportunity to make a hundred dollar donation to the Faribault foundation and through a collection of all the donors who are present at these events we'll vote and we'll make a grant out for five thousand dollars to a local nonprofit. It's very exciting, it's a very rewarding experience, and I'm welcoming the community of Fairboat to be part of these events. Um, there's some other great things happening at the foundation. If you're interested in learning more about our Hand Up campaign, making a donation to Viaduct Park, or getting ready for uh, getting into the holiday spirit and uh, helping fund the Thanksgiving Day community meal, uh, we're looking for donations always. And uh, if you have any tax planning purpose or tax planning needs uh, as the year comes to an end, give me a call. I'm happy to just have a conversation with you. You can reach me at the foundation by calling 507-805-8800. And I recently had somebody ask me, where is the Faribault Foundation? And we're at 530 Wilson Avenue here in Faribault. We share some space with the uh, Faribault Area Chamber of Commerce. So if you're ever wanting to stop by and chat, I'd love to meet with you. Hey everyone, it's me, Ms. Denny, your favorite children's librarian. Thanks for joining me. I'm here to tell you about everything happening at the Buckham Memorial Library in October. The first thing I want to make sure you know about right off the bat 
Ha, <laughs> see what I did there? Is our library lecture series number two. We will be hosting Andrew Went. He is an interpretive naturalist from the Minnesota State Park System, and he will be presenting a program about bats in Minnesota. So join us for that on Thursday, October 3rd at six o'clock. I think you're going to learn a lot. I hope to see you there. Uh, story time continues in October as well. We are offering story time in a variety of formats. We have our five minute bedtime stories on Tuesday nights on the library's YouTube and Facebook page. We have um, interactive story time on Zoom on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. And we have it here in person at the library on Thursdays at 10 a.m. And ECFE joins us once a month after story time for some activities, as well as local artist Kate Langless will be joining us to lead some art activities on selected dates after story time as well. So be sure to follow us on our library's website or Facebook so you can stay uh, up to date on the story time schedule and formats. Stitch a Bit meets in October on Friday the 4th and the 18th at 10 a.m. That is our knit, crochet, and needle craft group. All you have to do is bring your own project to work on and enjoy the company of some friends and uh, neighbors. That program takes place, like I said, on Friday the 4th and the 18th in October at 10 a.m. Our Teen Advisory Board, or TAB, will meet in October on Monday the 7th at 4.30 p.m. If you are a youth in grades 6 through 12 and you're interested in applying to be a member of TAB, please let me know and I will get you an application. Our book clubs will meet in October as well. We have two book clubs, book clubs for youth. One is Books and Brownies for grades 2 through 5. And the other is Pizza and Pages for grades 6 through 12. In October, Books and Brownies will meet on Monday the 14th at 4.30. And Pizza and Pages will meet on Monday the 21st at 4.30. Now, registration is required for both of these clubs. It's important so that I know how many brownies and how much pizza I need to have on hand. Uh, so please get a hold of me. You can email, call, or stop in and register so that you can be part of one of our book clubs. The assignment for both book clubs is the same for October. It is to read any graphic novel of your choice and come just uh, ready to share about it. Um, however, I am open to you reading whatever you like. So if you don't want to read a graphic novel, please, no worries. And I would love it if you still came to the book club. Just come and talk about anything that you have read recently. Our 3D printing lab takes place on the last Wednesday of every month, and the October one will take place on the 30th at 5.30. It actually runs from 5.30 to 7, and you can drop in any time for any length of time between those, uh, between 5.30 and 7. So Bob is our resident 3D printing expert. He'll be on hand to let you try out all sorts of cool things, and you can learn more about 3D printing and 3D modeling. Open to all ages and experience levels. Our ukulele expert, Alan will be uh, hosting her fun group, that's the Faribault Ukulele Network, in October as well. Uh, that is a group that is for advanced ukulele players. So if that is you, if you're someone who has your own uke, tuner, stand, and you know how to hold, strum, and play at least flat five chords, get a hold of Alan and talk to her about joining fun. If you have zero experience or very little playing the ukulele, but you'd like to learn, you can also get in touch with Alan and she will set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment with you uh, and get you everything you need to get going on learning how to play the ukulele. October is a beautiful month to check out the library story walk. You can take a stroll up and down Central Avenue and enjoy the current book that's in the story walk. Stop in the library and get a map so you know where all the stands are located. 
The Libraries Plaza is a, another great place to spend a beautiful October day. Um, so make sure you make the most of it before the snow starts to fly. <laughs> And then also another great thing to do in October is visit one of Minnesota's gorgeous state parks. And you can do that by borrowing a state park pass from your library. That's right. We have three passes that are available for checkout at no cost to you. They're good for seven days. They are available on a first come first serve basis. So stop in and see if we have a state park pass available for you to borrow. And then another great thing to do any time of year is to check out one of our adventure kits. We have loads of different options for you to choose from, and they're a great way to try out a new hobby. There are games available. There are magic kits. There's juggling. Um, there is a 3D printer. There's ukulele. There's rock hounding. There's bird watching. All sorts of great things. So stop in the library and see what adventure awaits you. If you have any questions about anything I've shared here today, please give us a call, stop in, check us out online. We're on social media, on Facebook and YouTube. You can email us. Uh, we would love to see you anytime the library is open. So stop in and, and find out what the library has to offer for you. Thanks for joining me today, friends. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks again for watching this month's episode of FCTV. Josh here with Harry Browns, a proud sponsor of Fairbrook Community Television. And again, stop on down if you have any purchasing needs or just want to be educated on vehicles these days. We'd be happy to help you out.